Greetings, fellow Dota fans. Welcome back to A Fistful of Tangos, brought to you by Beyond the Summit, myself, uh, and of course, Elgato and Gods, although, as of late, Elgato's been living off the land, and, well, Gods has been slacking, but hopefully we'll get back to work soon. Uh, so, welcome to A Fistful of Tangos, our 1v1 tournament featuring eight of the best players from North America and Europe, brought to you for your entertainment. It started over Christmas, and we're trying to get it done here as quickly as possible. We've had some delays, we've had some scheduling issues, we do apologize for those, but have no fear. No matter how long it takes, we will get this tournament played out, the prize money will be delivered to whoever earns it. We may just have to take a few heads off along the way. One head has already been lopped off, that being Kuroki, who did get knocked out in our first loser's bracket round one matchup by S4. So Kuroki, the first player to fall in this tournament, but he won't be the last. By the time the tournament's over, only one shall remain. Uh, there's a couple of players working their way through the loser's bracket right now, but two who are very close to achieving a top two finish are going to be playing here today. That's right, Fear versus Cinderin is today's matchup. Our winner's bracket... Our winner's bracket finals, actually, or you could say uh, the one step away, basically, from the grand finals. Man, I am really tired. Let's get through this. Okay, the rules for the 1v1 tournament. No Bottle Crow, Soul Ring, or Neutrals. You get an extra 150 gold for a courier, and yes, you must use it on a courier. As for hero selection, we give the players three predetermined possible matchups. They each give us a secret veto or ban of a matchup, not of a hero, and then... Uh, we look at the vetoes. If both players veto the same matchup, we use a coin flip to determine which one of the remaining two is played. If they ban two different matchups, there's only one remaining, and then we just use that one. There's no picking. For game one, we use coin flips to determine heroes and sides. The first to two kills or two towers wins that game one. It's a best out of three format nowadays. Thanks uh, to your feedback, we decided to change it from the best of one format used in winner's bracket round one. So, in the best of three format... After game one, the players switch sides. The The heroes remain the same on each side. So if Rubik is on the Radiant in game one, he's on the Radiant in game two. But then whoever played him in game one will be switching over to the Dire. So the players switch sides. They get to play the other side of the matchup. The same rules are used for game two. First to two kills or two towers wins. If a game three is required, then it's 1v1 Shadow Fiend mid. And because the only way to have two Shadow Fiends in one game is with cheats... Uh, and heroes with cheats can't buy items or use gold. We made the rule, no items and no runes, so it really comes down to a skill and a little bit of luck, perhaps. Uh, first killer, first tower wins. We've only seen the Shadow Fiend 1v1 mid come into play once so far in the tournament, and one of the players in this matchup was involved in that particular game, that, of course, being Fear, who took down Funic. Funic, I felt like he got a little impatient in that game, to be totally honest, but then's the break, so Fear is here uh, in this semifinal. Uh, or in this winner's bracket finals, and whoever wins this match, Fear or Cinderin, is only one best out of five away from taking home $200. And if you think about it, 200 bucks for what that all goes to one person for a best out of five, which maybe takes an hour of total play, maybe an hour and a half if it goes five games. That's some pretty good money. That's better money for an individual than most 5v5 tournaments in Dota, outside of the really big ones. But with all that being said, enough talking about the prize pool. Let's talk about uh, this matchup. Center versus Fear, as you can see, our winner bracket finals. Uh, Funic. S Korok S4, all sitting in the lower bracket in round two. St. City and Merlini still waiting to play their round one matchup. Should be coming up. Hopefully, it will get it played in the next day or two. Uh, and then we can move through the loser's bracket fairly quickly from there on out. Or so that's our hope, anyway. Okay, so for today's matchup, our matchups are as follows. We gave the players three possibilities. Puck versus Rubik, Queen of Pain versus Lion, and Shadow Shaman versus Lashrak. Three interesting matchups. Looking at the first matchup... Fade Bolt's really freaking good 1v1, and Rubik has the better range. But Puck, you do a phase shift, you can dodge a lot of the early damage. If you're good with that, you'll have the rune control advantage with your orb. Obviously, having mobility is going to make it easier to get to the runes. So I'd say fairly even. If you have to give someone an edge, it would be Rubik. And if Rubik gets to level 6, then all bets are off, because he's suddenly just going to be an absolute whale of a hero in the lane. As for the second match of Queen of Pain versus Lion... I really love this matchup. I know a lot of people think it's broken in favor of Lion. It's a lot of, some people think it's broken in favor of Queen of Pain. Everybody's got their opinions. Lion obviously has the better killing power by the time he hits six, and he's got the stuns to work with. We saw the Mana Drain build being really effective. At the same time, though, Fear played both sides of this matchup and won both sides. So an interesting game. Will he want to play? Will, will he want to try his hand at that matchup again, or will he look to get rid of it? We will find out pretty soon. Uh, the last matchup, Rasta versus Lashrak. A very different matchup from what we've seen so far in this tournament. Two heroes that have 
okay killing power. Rasta with that really low base move speed, though, it's going to be hard to kill a Flashrack who's got 315 base MS. Very, very swift hero. But he's got the wards. He's got Aether Shock, which is great for harassment. Uh, it's an interesting match. I'd say Lashrak probably with the edge just because he's got the better AoE spam. And he's not as reliant on his ultimate, the, the long cooldown wards. But hey, it's an interesting one. Let's see what the players chose to ban. Cinderin, banning out the Queen of Pain versus Lion. I forgot to draw my little black lines, but you get the idea. Cinderin bans Queen of Pain versus Lion. Fear bans Shadow Shaman uh, or Rasta versus Lashrak. That leaves us with Rubik versus Puck. We flipped a couple coins, and here's what we came up with. Fear on the Rubik on the Radiant side versus Cinderin on the Puck on the Dire. This will be game one. Then for game two, the players will get to play the other side of the matchup. So that's pretty much covers everything. There was something I was supposed to say about a rodeo and the road, but let's just play the damn match, shall we? Good luck, have fun, say both of the players. Great manners from them. Fear, starting with what has become his customary observers. One of the only players in this entire tour, I think he's the only player that's consistently bought observers every single game. I'd have to go back and check the VODs, but I know Fear has done it every game. There is one exception, and that one exception is, well, it was the game where there were no purchases allowed. The 1v1 Shadow Fee made. Aside from that, he's gotten wards every single freaking game. So Fear from Evil Genius is on the Rubik, heading towards the bottom rune very early on. Cinderin on the Dire, playing that puck. No wards for him. It's going to be sending his courier to scout. And as for Fear, well, where is he going to place the ward? It's going to boldly go towards the, this hill. Now, in a real 5v5, you want to do that. Oh, Fear, what are you up to? Are you hunting a courier? Yes, he is. I saw some people questioning, should you be hunting the courier? LD, what are you talking about? And Fear is here, well, to reinforce my theory that, hey, why not? Why not go look for that courier early on? If Cinder had sent a bottom, which we have seen Dire players do, we've seen at least one player in this tournament hide the courier in exactly that particular location. I don't know if it was Fear or not. Uh, and speaking of, uh, or Cinder or not, but speaking of Cinder, he checks top burn, he sees it's not there at the courier. Regen rune bottom, it is spotted by Fear, so Fear knows there's a regen bottom. Cinder and all he knows is that there's a rune bottom. The good news for Cinder, though, he should have the better creep block. That is the one trade-off if you're going to actually check the bottom rune, if you're going to go for that courier gank, uh, at least early on, and then stay there for the rune. Then you're not going to be able to get back to lane, because bottom rune is a little bit farther away, but hey, it's a trade-off that I think Fear's willing to make. If you do get the courier, you pretty much win the game automatically off of that. Cinder at level 1, opting for phase shift. You would never see this with the old phase shift, but with the new phase shift, well, it's got zero mana cost, so why not just use it whenever the hell you want and just trade blows as evenly as possible. When you have Fade Bolt, it's not going to do too much because Fade Bolt, you're just going to zap the puck with it. You'll never cast Fade Bolt on a creep, really. Uh, it's just not... Each jump deals less damage, but that's not the main thing. The main thing is that if you cast on a creep, then puck can just phase shift. It's unless all you care about is farming. Uh, you, you're not going to cast on the hero, so the phase shift won't help you against the fade bolt, but what it will help you against, in most cases, but what it will help you against is, of course, the auto attack. So, Fear, already 2 and 4, starting to really out CS Cinder, and, and this is with Cinder having the better block, having more base damage, and Fear only using one fade bolt so far. One thing I want to point out is both these heroes have quite high mana pool, so they can really spam their nukes a lot. Fear's up to 400 gold, Cinder sitting at 150. It's going to be throwing a phase shift out there, trying to trade auto attacks with Fear, but... Fear's getting the better time of it, and a lot of it is that 600 range. By the time Puck gets in to throw out an auto attack, Rubik has already thrown one and is winding up to throw the second. So it is hard to trade blows. Rubik also has a fantastic animation, one of the best I have to say in the game. Uh, at least for at least for heroes who aren't all about their animations. And he's got a bottle. It's coming out mid now. Cinder only sitting with 200 gold. Really falling behind here. 10 and 6 now for Fear. Cinder is not taking a creep, and now, oh, he might be in trouble. He's not going to phase shift to the orb. He's coming back. Can he salve up? He will salve. Just enough to live. I think Fear could have dove for that, but uh, there would have been another phase shift, I guess, so didn't want to risk it. Would have been close, but Fear, why take the risk when you're dominating your opponent in the lane? Already 11 and 6, and the orb flying out. Cinder in Des Dire Straits here. He wasted... Oh, he could have... Maybe orbed in for the courier, but would have given up a first blood if he did it. Dyer's he's gonna have to let it go. Now he's trying to contest this room, but Fear's got this ward up top, so, uh, bottom, so he actually sees Cinderin. 
Oh, man. He had all the vision in the world there. Actually, I think the creeps gave him vision. He's also got a hill ward. Very nice thing to have against Puck. Whenever you're 1v1 mid, this is a really important thing to do. Is put that ward on the hill so even when they have the high ground advantage, you can at least see them so you can nuke them down. And Fear, he did it with the Venomancer Gale versus uh, versus Funic in the first game of that series. And uh, we're seeing it again here, just really using the wards to his favor. Up to 11 and 6. Cinder is starting to catch up, but still no bottle out. And this is just going to be a war of attrition. Especially with that early region, Fear can be so incredibly aggressive. Anytime you get an early region or in mid, if you don't get back up, if you're not able to bottle Crow, generally the hero that doesn't get that regen rune, if they don't lose the lane, they're going to be at a serious disadvantage. Fear already, well, when it comes to denies, actually Cinder is doing decently because Fear walked all the way bottom to get the rune. But Fear's going to boot soon, and then Cinder is going to be in a bit of trouble. And the issue for Cinder is. And the issue for Puck as a hero is that you need to use your orb to farm, but your orb is also your only real escape mechanism. So whenever you use the orb, nice phase shift dodge there. Whenever you use the orb, you pretty much have to back off, which means you're not auto attacking to last hit. So it's not an ideal situation for Cinder. And Fear really dominating the matchup, and uh, even with phase shift, just not having a good time. I gotta say, Fear, you have to credit him for, you know, putting the early ward down and and then going for that rune. It's something we haven't seen other players do, so. You know, Fear just using every little tool at his disposal to try and accrue small advantages. The 4-minute rune's about to spawn, and Cinder and I like this choice. He knows he needs to make something happen. He doesn't even have his, bo have his bottle yet. He's got to take a risk. He will find a rune. It's a double damage, though. Double damage. Unfortunately for him, since he saw that Fear had a regen, he didn't know this wouldn't be a regen, as the same rune won't spawn middle tower is under attack. twice in a row. And as a result, well, he was going to get something, but it was never going to be a regen. The courier Maybe delivers boots. Fear attack. just... 21 and 11, zapping Cinder, and, and that's what I mean with the phase shift. It doesn't help you if you're actually casting Fable on the hero. It only helps with the bounces. So Cinder, one more zap, he's dead. Also Fear, about to hit level 6. Then Fear can steal phase shift. He can really dive the tower, or even better yet, steal the orb. Now he's going to start zoning Cinder off the tower. He's looking for a zap. He's got the boot. Cinder doesn't. Zap! First blood! Pew, pew, pew. Says Fear, and Fear strikes first. 25 and 11. This is looking bad for Cinder, and there's not much comeback hope in sight this game. Five minutes in, horribly out cs Not getting out rune controlled. The wards are up for Fear. There are no rune wards for Cinder, and he still doesn't have his bottle. Now he's down to 230 gold, and now Fear is going to start stealing spells. What is he going to get? He really wants to steal the orb, it looks like, since he's not opting to grab the phase shift. It's only a level 1 phase shift, which is still a decent ability because you can do dodge things like a killing tower shot, but there you go. As soon as the orb's thrown, Fear steals it. And once again, the walking courier comes in, phase boots up on Fear. Oh boy. Well, if you have phase boots and your opponent doesn't even have a bottle or boots, that's pretty much game. I mean, really, how are you coming back from this if you're Cinder? And, uh, just, it shows you how important the laning stages in Dota 1, that, or in Dota. That's what I love about this tournament is... Even the slightest advantages just completely turn a lane and you know, it's also exacerbated by the fact that players can't bottle crow, they can't get items like Soul Rain, but you know, it makes that those first few creep waves so much more important. We have seen some comeback potential, I think most notably the Sing Sing game, but yeah, Fear just really dominated the matchup. 33 and 12, Cinder and 11 and 1. Fear has more denies than Cinder and has creeps. His ward does die, and there is a regen bottom, and now they're both going for it. But Cinder, he can't even contest the runes anymore. The reason he can't contest them is Fear's phase boots, and Cinder doesn't even have regular boots. So, uh, as a result, if he tries to go for the rune, even if he orbs in, Fear can chase him down and then kill him. Dyer's top tower wow, is so underleveled. Fear's on the prowl, Cinder in a little bit of trouble, orbing it is Fear. He's gonna come in, and the lift, and then says surprise from the other side. Cinder will orb to safety. But this doesn't feel good for Cinder in. He gets the bottle. It's a six and a half minute bottle. And this is the one downside to going for the plus stats build. If you don't go eco build, and you're forced to use your early regen for whatever reason, you're so incredibly screwed at 1v1. It's kind of a risky build in some way. It's almost more risky than going eco build. Because with eco build, you just need like three or four creeps, and you can just use your nukes to get those. So no matter what, you should have your bottle coming out. But when you go for plus stats build, you have to get a bunch of creeps, like 8 to 10 creeps before the bottle comes. And that's, you know, that's assuming you don't get a kill and you don't die either. Which can disrupt the gold one way or another. But Fear, what's he got coming now? It's going to be the Magic Wand and a fresh set of Observers so disciplined with getting these out. 
And the wards have paid for themselves already in this matchup. Look at how much he's out CS Cinder in, and it all started because he saw that range rune bottom. He knew what rune was going to be there. And 200 gold for the ward, sure, but it's also paid for itself in other ways. He might even go in here for the kill. Cinder and already in a lot of trouble. Where's that zap? Cinder in 7 HP. I think Fear could have dived that and gone, gone for the win, but he's playing it really safe. He wants that money. He wants that $200 for first place. And if you win this match, it's a much easier road. You only have to play one more match. If you lose it, you have to play the loser bracket finals and then the winner bracket finals. Uh, 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 and then the grand finals. So fit center and back to fountain again. I honestly wouldn't be surprised to see him s to just tap out. We saw what I thought was a very early forfeit in one of the earlier matches this tournament. But this, this is not even early. I mean, really, you don't have boots. And now Fear's got a wand and phase boots. And he's out CSing you, and he's got one, and he's one kill away from the, winning the game. And oh, by the way, he's got wards, and he's got a Radiance double damage rune. I just can't really see a comeback for Cinderin. I mean, I'm really racking my brain, but Puck isn't the best comeback hero. He doesn't have, you know, like another toxin or you know the level six killing power of a Viper or a Lion, some of the other heroes in this tournament. Puck's a hero that just is really good at getting those little trade offs in the lane and then starting to find kills. But if you have a bad start, very hard to come back, especially against a hero like Rubik. What's Fear going to look to steal here? Cinderin is popping that phase shift. Every time he throws the orb, something that I probably should have pointed out earlier, but every time he's orbing, he's phase shifting. The reason for this is he'd rather give up phase shift to uh, Fear than anything else. Cinderin is going to be forced to orb out of here. He does silence. Doesn't matter. Two kills for Fear. Fear does it again. He's off to a 1-0 start. We've seen this movie before. Can Cinderin bounce back? The captain of MTW. Or will Feared make it a clean toe sweep? Let's find out soon, guys. But for now, that wraps it up for game one. Fear leading the series 1-0. It's a best out of three. Senderin on the ropes here. If he loses this game, he drops down to the loser's bracket. Still assured a top three place, three finish. But again, you want that first place. You want that $200. So stay tuned, guys. Game two coming up soon.